Among the most striking changes that Ye's team first documented was a shift in the timing and duration of the breeding season. On Mount Laguna, cold winters and hot summers restrict junco breeding from May to early June, with only a single brood of offspring raised each season. At UCSD, however, juncos start nesting in February and continue well into August, raising up to four broods. This dramatic adjustment of breeding schedule has had cascading effects on many other traits. And this uh, tendency to stay all year round and to have multiple families each year seems to have led to a suite of characters that make males much more interested in raising young than they do in chasing after mates. And we found, for example, that the males themselves are less aggressive to each other. Uh, importantly, that both the males and the females have less white in their tail, and white is used as an aggressive display. They have less black in their head, which is another signal of aggression used in displays. The males are better parents at the nest, as was shown by Jonathan Atwell. So there's a whole suite of characters that have evolved, we feel, in response to the longer breeding season. But over on top of that, we've got pressures or changes that have happened in response to the urban environment. People that study animal behavior will talk about how bold or how shy uh, individual animals or populations of animals might be compared to others. And so the juncos here at UCSD are very bold, uh, both in terms of how close they'll allow people to get to them. They're very tame or very bold, but also in their willingness to approach uh, novel objects or enter into new situations you know, to potentially explore uh, food resources or breeding habitats that they have not encountered before. When researchers actually quantified just how bold campus juncos have become, they found that they allowed people to approach three times closer than the birds on the mountain did, and they were twice as fast and extensive in exploring novel situations. Blood samples revealed that campus juncos also keep their stress hormone levels lower during dangerous situations likely allowing them to cope with the more chaotic and complex environment found in the city. Even the way that campus juncos communicate with one another is altered. Males sing at a higher pitch, a shift that allows their songs to be heard above the constant hum of low-frequency traffic noise. Altogether, research has revealed a long list of changes in the biology of the UCSD juncos when compared to Mount Laguna. These differences include physical characteristics, behaviors, and physiological traits. But an important question remained. Were these differences induced by growing up and living in the new environment? Or were they due to genetic differences between the colonists at UCSD and the ancestral range population at Mount Laguna? This question is similar to the nature versus nurture topic often debated in humans. But in plants and animals, scientists can more directly test this question of the relative importance of genes versus environment by using what's called a common garden experiment. By transporting plant seeds or young animals from two different locations into a common environment, researchers can raise them under identical conditions and ask which differences persist and which do not. If differences persist, it provides strong evidence for genetic divergence. If differences disappear, then they were likely induced by the different environments. Researchers conducted common garden studies with the juncos from UCSD and Mount Laguna. Nestlings and juveniles were captured from both populations, and the young birds were transported to an aviary. For more than three years, birds were raised under identical environmental conditions, and many of the same traits were measured as in the field studies. The results were remarkable. Many of the differences persisted. Tail white, head black, and wing lengths were still different, despite the common environmental conditions, including identical diet, temperature, and day length. Juncos taken from campus were still bolder and more exploratory, and they had lower stress hormone levels, 
even after identical exposure to human activity and other possible stressors. And the males still sang at higher frequencies, even without differences in background noise. These studies, along with additional genetic analyses, provide evidence that the juncos on campus evolved rapidly over the course of less than 30 years. The campus